Peace be to you. Let me relate to you my testimony, this is why I am forced to reject Allah, Muhammad and Islam. I was raised up in a nominal Christian family, where my parents hardly worship God regularly during the Sunday church services. From the history lesson in school, I came to know about the various founders of the world's religions such as Gautama Buddha, Jesus Christ, and Muhammad. At about 14 years old, I watched the film show captioned Jesus of Nazareth during an evangelistic rally. After the show, I decided to accept the invitation from the preacher to recognize Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. As for me, Jesus Christ is superior than all founders of the world's religions, because only he alone is invincible, as death could not hold him in the tomb for more than three days. Few years later, I was baptized by a pastor in the Protestant church, and gradually began to read the Holy Bible. One day, a Muslim lady intended to share with me via Yahoo Messenger, as to, why the Holy Bible is corrupted. It was taken from Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8 which reads, How can you say, quote, We are wise, for we have the law of the Lord, unquote, when actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely. Unquote, New International Version It was my very first time, to hear from a Muslim, that the scribes have falsified the Holy Bible. I refuse to believe such interpretation of the Holy Bible. I quickly checked with my King James Version Bible on the same verse. Jeremiah 8 verse 8 reads, How do ye say, We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made it, the pen of the scribes is in vain. As for me, the pen of the scribes is in vain means, whatever the scribes have written with the pen, are useless or in vain as the people refuse to read the Holy Scripture. The same thing is true today, as people just refuse to read the Holy Bible. One day, I was pondering as to, why people are converting to Islam? Should I convert to Islam for social status? Is Quran really the final testament from God? Is the Quran historically true? Then I began to search for the answer, should I convert to Islam from Christianity? At the age of 24, I decided to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ, as I needed the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, as much as all his apostles waited in Jerusalem until they were baptized by him on the day of Pentecost. I am an analytical person and I sensed a tangible touch from the Spirit of Yahweh, while I was reciting Psalms 134. At the same time, I was surrounded by a few brothers in Christ, to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I knew for sure that the Spirit of Yahweh came into my body and not an evil spirit. The Psalmists were known to be filled by the Holy Spirit, when they sang the Psalms. I was then filled with tremendous power, to recite loudly and clearly. It happened inside the church, where we gathered on a Saturday morning for a few minutes of prayer, before going off to our respective workplace. I did not speak in new tongues right away. A week later or so, we gathered at the same church to pray to Lord Jesus Christ for him, to fill me with his Holy Spirit, and release their gift of speaking in new tongues. Lo and behold, I sensed my belly had something going to burst forth through my mouth. As I opened my mouth to say Hallelujah, Hallelujah, and then the Spirit burst forth as streams of praises in new tongues. It lasted for about one or two minutes. But it dramatically strengthened my faith, to testify for Adonai Yahshua Messiah. I am glad that Yahshua loved me despite of addressing him with an alternative name. The Holy Spirit is the perfect rabbi and inspirational author of the Holy Scripture. This is what I have found out from King James Version Bible, the Hallelujah Scripture, and the Hebrew Lexicon. Jeremiah 8 verse 8 reads, How do you say, We are wise, and the Torah of Yahweh is with us? But look, the false pen of the scribe has worked falsehood. Quote Hallelujah Scripture. There were three common groups of religious people at the time of Prophet Yermia who namely rabbis, priests and scribes. The rabbis and the priests had the Torah of Yahweh. Could the scribes who were religious copyists and lawyers falsify the Torah of Yahweh in the hands of the rabbis and priests? No way. It is interesting to know that the Hebrew parents used to name their children after the Elohim that they served. For instance, Yermiyahu in Hebrew means, Yah will rise. 
and Yeshayahu in Hebrew is equivalent to Isaiah in English. Yeshayahu means Yah has saved. Yahudah in Hebrew is equivalent to Judah in English. Yahudah means, Yah shall be praised. Joseph in ancient Hebrew is written as Yod, Hey, Uah, Samek, and P, which is equivalent to Roman letters, Y-H-U-S-P. The Hebrew transliteration is Yahu Saif. It means Yah has added. Yahu Saif was added as the eleventh son of Jacob. The Hebrew word Eli, means my mighty one, is first used by high priest Eli, based on the biblical books of Samuel. The etymology of the word Eli, is derived from Hebrew word El, bears Hebrew Strong's code H410. El in Hebrew bears two letters Aleph and Lamed. Aleph remains an A not E, before the introduction of Nikku dot system. Coincidentally, Ali, in Arabic shows perfect similarity to Hebrew Eli, which is a form of homonym. As the Arabs could imitate the Hebrew name Eli to become Ali, then why Arabs have failed to imitate Yod, hey, uah, hey, for the Quran? Every true prophet should be able to restore the name of Elohim from the Hebrew acronym Yod, hey, uah, hey. The Mesoretic scribes had concealed the name of Elohim, so that the false prophets could not profane his name. As you can see from the Paleo-Hebrew script's inscription on the stone tablet, the Ten Commandments contain the name of Elohim. The Mesoretic scribes did not translate the name of Elohim in the Hebrew scripture, as a form of concealment. Moreover, the name of the Hebrew such as Yehoshua, Yehuda, and Yehoshaph, were intentionally changed with different vowels from its original Yahu to become Yeho, for further concealment. Psalm 68 verse 4 says, Sing to Elohim, sing praises to his name. Raise up a highway for him, who rides through the deserts, by his name Yah, and exalt before him. This is crystal clear that the name of Yah is the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob, the Hebrews. Yahuwah also commanded, those who rides camels through the deserts, to praise him by his name Yah. So the Bedouin and Arabians were told by Yahuwah Almighty, to praise him by his name Yah, not Allah. Joshua chapter 24 verse 26 says, Then Yahushua wrote these words in the book of the Torah of Elohim. And he took a large stone, and set it up there under an Allah, that was by the set-apart place of Yahuwah. Three Hebrew words namely Elohim, Allah and Yahuwah, are written in one verse altogether. Elohim carries five Hebrew letters Allah, Lamed, Hey, Yod, and Mem and vowels I know are added to form Elohim which means mighty ones. The second Hebrew word Alec carries only four Hebrew letters Alaf, Lamed, Lamed, and He. However, the Nikud vowel system has simplified to Lamed with a dot in the middle of Lamed to signify double L, and a vowel A is added to form Ala, which means an oak tree. The third Hebrew word carries the tetragram or four Hebrew letters Yod, He, Ua, and He. This is parallel to ancient Hebrew as Yah, Ha, Wa, Ha. However, the etymology of W shows that it is formed from W, as introduced by the Norman scribes in the 11th century. When Ha, in ancient Hebrew is shortened to H, it matches perfectly with Paleo-Hebrew, to spell as Y-A-H-U-A-H and it is pronounced as Yahuwah. As you can see that Ella with double Lamed means an oak tree. But the removal of a single lamed will become Allah, which means, curse or cursing. It is shocking for me to find out that Arabic Allah, sound falls within the frequency in the range of Allah, and Allah. How could Arabs glorify the Creator with such word Allah? The translator for Arabic English Quran has falsely translated Allah to God in disguise of the truth. But the etymology of God shows it comes from Proto-Germanic word Gutten, shortened to God. Moreover, the Hebrew word Gad, bears Strong's code H1410, is written as G and D which means fortune of Yahuwah. But Gad is pronounced as God, as clued by the Nikku dot system. Gad is the seventh son of Jacob, bore by maid Zilpah, whom Dali a wife of Jacob, gave him such name. Nowhere Allah or God in the Quran, says to Muhammad directly, I am God. Joshua chapter 24 verse 26 is crystal clear, 
that Yahweh had inspired the word Allah and Elohim, to mean an oak tree and mighty ones respectively. As the Hebrew word Allah means an oak tree about 2,000 years, before the existence of Arabic language, then it becomes apparent, that Allah of Islam cannot be a true God. Islam is about Kabaism, because all prayers must be directed to the black stone idol in Mecca. Yes, I invent this word Kabaism, because it defines Muslims more correctly since Muslims in every part of the world, focus their prayers to the black stone embedded in the eastern pillar of the Kaaba. The use of any object as the focal point of prayer, is clearly defined as idolatry in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 1. Yet the followers of Islam have been brainwashed to believe that it is acceptable by ignoring the Torah of Yahweh. They bear false witness before Yahweh Almighty, that they are not idolaters. But Quran chapter 34 verse 44 to 45, Quran chapter 28 verse 46, Quran chapter 32 verse 2 to 3, and Quran chapter 11 verse 49 are self-explanatory, that there were no holy scripture and no prophet sent to the Arabs in Medina prior to Muhammad in order to provide them the guidance. When I have read the aforesaid four passages from the Muslim author, who understood that no prophet was sent to Medina prior to Muhammad, I was shocked to find out, that the use of Kaaba black stone did not come from the divine inspiration of Yahweh Almighty. It came from the tradition of the pagan Arabs in Mecca. Yet the Muslims are claiming that Abraham and Ishmael the Hebrews, went to Mecca to build it as the house of worship. This defies common sense, as to why the Kaaba house could be built 200 kilometers further south of Medina, when no prophet had been sent to Medina? The Islamic tradition shows that Muhammad himself held the black stone and put on the eastern pillar of the Kaaba house. No doubt, he settled the dispute as to, who was eligible to hold that black stone. But the Torah of Yahweh is an eternal book, to condemn idolatry by prostrating to any physical object of worship. I am forced to reject Islam, because Jesus Christ did not prostrate before the Kaaba black stone during his ministry on earth. You see the founder of Islam, Muhammad helped to repair the Kaaba black stone in his adulthood, when he did not even read the Torah of Moses about the prohibition, to bow down before any image of stone in the land. Whose fault is that in Islam? The Quran is not historically correct, as I have found that Yahweh spoke to Mose from the burning bush incident in the first person. When Mose asked Yahweh what was his name, he advised him what he should speak to the children of Israel. Exodus 3 verse 14 reads, And Elohim said to Mose, Haya Asher Haya. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Haya has sent me to you. Haya originates from three Hebrew letters He, Yod, and He. Haya means to exist, that is be or become, come to pass. Haya is a Hebrew idiom to mean self-existing. The self-existing one has sent me to you, says Yahweh. But the author of the Quran has falsified the name of Elohim, to read as Musa, verily I am Allah. Quran chapter 20 verse 11 to 14, Quran chapter 27 verse 9 in Quran chapter 28 verse 30, all contains the blatant blasphemy on the holy name of Elohim. Yahweh spoke to Mose, I am Yahweh your Elohim for 29 times in the Torah of Yahweh. Yahweh means Yah is self-existing and eternal. Nowhere in the entire book of the Quran, Allah spoke to Muhammad, I am Yahweh. The only Hebrew word reserved for the Creator is Yahweh. El and Elohim are not exclusive titles for the creator of the universe. The word eternal means to last or live for eternity. But eternal does not mean self-existing, that is existing by himself, uncreated, and immortal. Proverbs 28 verse 9 says, He who turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. To conclude, Islam has no truth in the way to worship Yahweh as the Quran is historically wrong on the name of Elohim. Both words Allah and God, are not inspired by Yahweh for his holy name. The use of Kaaba black stone is an idolatry even though Muslims deny it is so. But the Proverbs of Yahweh is noteworthy, he who turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. So, what is the point of praying five times a day, when it is obviously an abomination before Yahweh Almighty?
This is why I am forced to reject Allah, Muhammad, and Islam. Shalom.